Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here, Smart Business Moves. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. We're uh, holding up here, coast to coast. Um, we're uh, we're we, we're calling an audible today. Um, Liz, you want to share with us uh, our new plan for today? Sure. So, uh, well, on, uh, RJ was supposed to be on the. Facebook Live today, and he had an unexpected event happen, a business event. He's okay. Everybody's fine, but it was something he couldn't get out of. So he has rescheduled for next week. We'll get to see RJ. Um, but for today, we are, I, uh, Tom and I have been talking about wanting to go through our link list and sort of revisit everything and see what's in there. There's a ton of great stuff in there that we haven't even looked at in forever. So we're like, ah, timing. We're like at first we're like, we should get a guest. No, 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 ah, great. This is perfect timing to be able to go through our list. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm, I'm actually excited about it. And I'm sorry to have RJ, but. Yeah, but he's gonna join us next week. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it's not like we're missing the opportunity. It's we're just going to have to anticipate it for a little yeah. while. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Mm. Hey, Ernie. So, hey, oh, I don't even have my comments up yet. So, but why don't you pull up the schedule, Tom? Because the schedule did change. It did. It did. It did. It did. Where'd it go? Mm. <laughs> hey, Tom, do you have a hint for our um, Friday guest? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay. Never mind. Well, uh, I'll handle it. <laughs> it's just yeah, let me, give, me, give, me, give, me, give me a minute. We don't, we'll do that at the end, okay? Okay. Okay. Hey, Leslie. Hey, hi gang, loop me in if you want. All right, Ernie. Um, Sarah says that's a great idea. Oh, to go through the links? I know, right? Thanks, Sarah. I, that's what I thought too. There's so much good stuff in there and uh, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've thought, I need to go in and check out that stuff and just haven't done it yet. <laughs> I know, I like ho too. Leslie, ho all. Leslie says ho all. A quick typo, but it actually works. Looks good. Uh, all right. So tomorrow, actually, Tom, why don't you go ahead and talk about Deal Day? Well, tomorrow's going to be the introduction to Deal Day. Deal Day is something we're going to be doing on like every other Wednesday. And what we're going to be doing is is kind of doing a soft launch of that. We're going to have a couple of deals. I don't know. We're still figuring it out. We're going to at least have one really awesome deal. I know that, but uh, the deals will be good for like the balance of the week typically. So they're very short lived and they're unique and something that you can only get through smart business moves, cleaning business builders, excuse me, smart business moves, cleaning business a day, too many businesses. You ever do that with us? You do. I, I wish I didn't, but I do. Um, yeah. But it's going to be pretty cool, and it's going to be like a four-minute video from a, a, a vendor, somebody who sells either product or services to uh, house cleaning businesses, and um, I think it's going to be fun. And we'll be ramping up for real to uh, Wednesdays from tomorrow, which now I just have to go to my calendar, and it's the 29th. But we'll give you a, we'll give you a sample of it tomorrow and we'll talk a little more detail about how it's going to work and why it's important and you know we want a lot of questions and, and and we'll take feedback tomorrow as well because we're still kind of working out some of the details and we're going to have uh some potential advertisers joining us next week or tomorrow rather as well to kind of get a feel for what it's about so um you guys come on out and give us a good audience to to, to make it look good for us yeah, and one more thing about um, it, the introduction tomorrow is it's going to be glitchy, y'all, because we're still trying to figure out how to get 
the deals out to everybody. So we're really hoping that our regulars, yes, Brian, you're one of them. <laughs> Leslie, you know, all of, all of our regulars, if you guys can help us out by, yes, this really worked well, or no, this didn't work at all. Any of that kind of stuff would be super, super helpful for tomorrow. Because we already know that it's not going to be smooth. That's why we're doing the introduction instead of doing the, the full-blown plan for tomorrow. Um, okay, then on Thursday, um, you guys have seen her in chat and in comments, uh, Leslie Shepherdson Field. So Leslie, uh, I, I'm helping her a lot because my painting, she painted this painting. And this, her, her name is Penelope, that's in the background here. And uh, uh, so I, I mention her a lot, but I, I don't mention that she lives in California and she's been around. A, I'm not going to say a long time because I don't want to make it sound like you're old there, Leslie, but she's had a business for quite a while. And so a very stable business. And I'm hoping that she can come on and talk to us about, hey, Denise, and talk to us about the second wave. So they're closing down again in California. So they're getting hit again. Uh, this timing is really uh, unfortunate or maybe fortunate, kind of depends, right? Um, middle of July, we haven't really seen what's going to happen at the end of July. So we're hoping Leslie can give us sort of a, a, a preview of what's to come for the rest of us around the nation from, from a solid business and, and how it's affecting them. And then go ahead, Tom, on the spot. On the spot is our rapid fire Q&A session where we're mm -hmm. On the clock for 60 seconds where Liz, myself, and our special guest all get one minute each to answer your most important and pressing questions uh, regarding the house cleaning industry or anything else that you want to talk about, really. But for the most part, we talk about cleaning homes and, and, and the business of, of cleaning homes. And it's, uh, it's fun. And we go. It's Friday. So we go. As long as we have questions up to top of the hour or if we get done early, we get done early and we go fishing. Yeah. I won't be going well, fishing. We got done but, three minutes early last week. How many minutes? Two? Three? Maybe. I don't know. You mean three minutes early off of our start time, like 57 minutes? Hey, which hey, means hey, we no. do um, okay. top of the hour, you know, if. <laughs> yeah. if, a little, if, if there's a little lag on the internet, if it appears that we start a little bit late, you know, it's my hands are tied on, on some of these times. You are not blaming the internet, right? And you, for, for us being late. <laughs> Thank you for um, anything else. Yeah, that's true. All right. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm. Sarah was sitting on um, just on a call. She was like, "Yeah, I want to be for a, there for on the spot." So yeah, you you will love on the spot this week, Sarah. Make sure you get us some good questions going. Oh, I don't know. Were we frozen for a second? Did you notice us being frozen, Tom? No. Linda, I'm gonna hope it was you. You were you were moving the whole time. All right, good. So Linda, I hope you're gonna be on tomorrow for deal day too. Since you're one of the regulars, you'll be able to help us out, give us some um, some feedback on how how everything's working, what we could do better, different, how we could make make it more exciting and more valuable for the future. All righty. So uh, for those of you that weren't on, oh good, Sarah's not frozen. Yay, awesome. Uh, so for those of y'all that weren't on when we first started, we started talking about what we're going to do today. If you're thinking, oh, what happened to RJ? I know. I'm sorry. He had a business emergency come up. Y'all know how that goes, right? And he's very busy. He's got a, a large business. So when things pop up for him, it's got to go. So he's going to reschedule for next week. And oh, it froze for Ernie, too. Well, poo. All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry for that swearing, you guys, on this Facebook Live here. Yeah, but, it was. yeah I know. I'm popping out over here. I need to give um, you a swearing lesson. That's what we need to do. <laughs> but don't be sad. Ernie's not going to. I mean, that, that RJ can't be here today. He'll be here next week. And today we thought we're going to take this opportunity to do something that we've been wanting to do for a while, is to go through our list of all of these different links that we have that we haven't 
you know, we, we haven't looked at them since we put them out. How long has it been now, Tom? Months. We've been doing this since the middle of March. So what does that make us? I was looking on, I was looking at our YouTube channel because we upload these like after. Yeah. And there's a bunch of videos up there. Um, Is it literally four months then? Wow. Okay. Time flies. No Time kidding. Flies. Kind of so, like uh, we've been cleaning homes this long, right? <laughs> oh, thank goodness we have been cleaning homes. Oh, more cleaning homes, yeah, to go. So we thought we would uh, go through those links. Some of them we probably don't even need anymore, uh, especially some of the ones where we were talking about some of the old, uh, an example is an old calculator for the PPP because that whole thing changed. Right, so well, have a I don't, I don't, maybe maybe they updated it. You never know. Maybe we'll find out. Well, we have, yeah. Maybe, yeah. All right, all right. Let's go. I'm excited. Oh. Let's talk, let's talk about just a couple of other things going on, because we're going to talk more about this Thursday, but we really haven't talked about current events in a while either. And I took an opportunity here for the last little bit, just kind of pulling up some resources. Um, you got states down here in the orange that are basically reversing their opening plans and starting to shut things back down. And like Thursday, Leslie is going to share with us some of uh, what she's experiencing in California. But... You, know, you can see that there's a lot of other states that really aren't reversing, but they're kind of kind of just put the brakes on where they are. And you got other states that are still reopening, and others that have reopened, and they're they're doing doing okay. Um, if you want to kind of see what's going on state by state in terms of. Uh, reporting cases, it looks like at, uh, there's some correlation between these dark blue states here and the, the ones here orange that are um, reversing. I see my state is dark blue though, and we're pausing. Yep, yep. If you just look at the total mm -hmm. cases that are being reported day after day you know we're, we're spiking here we had like sixty six thousand here and that was on the 10th that was on a friday if you watch these it's interesting coming out of a weekend typically you see how it dips like on monday and tuesday yeah i think it has something to do with the way you know they report their data and when the labs are doing their stuff and maybe it gets you know bulked up but once you get to like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it kind of shoots up again. And then you get to the next week and it kind of kind of dips. So this is this dip here is higher than this dip here. So just because that's lower than the, the three days preceding it doesn't mean that, well, hey, it's getting better. All that means is, you know, this line here is like a seven day average. And. You know, some of you guys that have, have seen some of our KPI videos or done foundations or any ways that we do math, a lot of times we'll do like rolling averages, seven day rolling averages or 30 day rolling averages. In this case, seven days makes the most sense. That seven day average is just climbing straight up at a, at a pretty good slope. So um, it's getting worse. And hey, there's a lot of good comments over here too, Tom. Sorry. Okay, what do we got? Yeah, yeah, you guys, I'm sorry. I always cut Tom off because he's not a guest. I'm so used to talking to him. Blah, 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 so. After, no worries. That's, uh, I'm, I'm immune, I'm, 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 I've grown to be immune to that, Liz. There's, yes, I know you have, but everybody you, else. You, 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 have to try, you have to try really hard to hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't try. I'm, I'm pretty good even without, though. Uh, okay, look, what is Ernie saying? He says, creating a one-hour program five days a week is a challenge. You two do a great job. Thanks, Ernie. Take it from EJ the DJ. What you have been doing for the last four months is not easy. Congrats. Oh, thanks, Ernie. Appreciate that. Right, you see um, the picture. You see, you see Ernie's Facebook picture. He's got his uh, headset on. I think that was back yeah. doing his, uh, his, his broadcasting. Yeah, awesome. And then... Um, 
Sarah is saying that she's trying to mentally prepare, yeah, for another shutdown. That's why I want to bring Leslie on, right? And and hear it directly from her. I, I think I'm I'm with you, Sarah. But then Ernie, I didn't hear see that email. So who is yeah, that email from? That, yeah. An email from who? Was it uh yeah, and are you in somebody's pocket there, Ernie? What's up with that? What politician have you bought? Yeah, what's up? I I, I really want to hear more about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Are you looking for it, Tom? Are you trying to find some email? Trying to find out why you didn't get the, the fancy yeah, Ernie? Why, why I didn't get the memo. Yeah. Oh, well, don't do it yet, Sarah, because we don't, we didn't, we didn't get the email. email. Now, this is five days ago. This was from the eighth. But uh, Schumer, who is the Senate Minority Leader, at least for the moment, um, and it says that he's pushing for a second round of PPP loans. So, what I do know is. Uh, Congress is in session this week, next week. There's all kinds of discussions. I've got some other articles that I can, can share with you here in terms of things that they're talking about. Uh, something's going to happen over the next two weeks because they have August recess, and then it's going to be hot and heavy with the election going into uh, beginning of November. So any legislation they're going to do in terms of economic stimulus or support for, for business, small business, is going to happen in the next two weeks. So we're not, yeah. we're not going to have to wait long to know what's coming and what they're doing. Yeah, I'm with you, Sarah. I, you know, I'm trying not to get excited, but it is nice that it's a possibility. And, oh, good to know, Dusty. Costco has masks again, you guys. Hey, um, that brings brings up a point for me, Tom. Um, why is it that we're not hearing uh, very much about – like the 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 numbers are getting so much bigger and bigger than they've ever been in the past and we were so worried back in the day about what a great picture dusty just saw your picture up there it's great um um why aren't we hearing about ventilators and that kind of stuff now are people getting sick but not dying as much or no, they several things are happening. They, they've got several therapeutics out there that they're using. They're figuring out. They know a lot more about what the virus does to the human body. It uh, affects the blood. It, it, it causes clotting. A lot of the deaths were because of like strokes and heart problems and things like that. And they are really early on giving people like blood thinners and uh, remdesivir is like one of the therapeutics that they're using uh, more more liberally liberally now. They they understand a lot more. So if somebody does get sick, the odds of them you know surviving is is, is, is certainly higher. And plus they've okay. they've made they made more ventilators not necessarily more icu beds but but some of the equipment and so on and so forth that's out there maybe not as distributed as well as it needs to I understand there's some states that are still struggling for for ppe for instance but um there's you know we're in better shape now than we were three months ago in terms of understanding how to treat the the, the virus for sure we're just more prepared now um, in terms of how it's growing, you got this uh, RT value, which is basically whenever it's greater than one, that means whenever when one person has the uh, the, the virus, they're, they're spreading it to whatever this RT value is, more people. So if it's more than one, that means it's still growing and spreading. And this is every uh, state in the country. And with the exception of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, every other state, the uh, the spread is growing so that uh, pretty much it's, it's worse in some states than it is in others and it's starting to get uh you know alarming in some areas because resources are starting to uh medical resources are starting to, to come short but um there's very few places in the country where 
there's not more people with more cases now than there was a week ago. Well, he's is saying that they are hearing about certain cities maxing out in California. So, all right. Uh, something else is just worth looking at. I think this is the one. Daily infections and testing. This is the um, the healthdata.org. This is the uh, Bill Gates uh, group. But you see how once they get into October, they're projecting that this uh, daily infection rate is going to be going up quite a bit. I mean, right now, you know, they're projecting you know 120 or so thousand. Where are we? Where are we now? Actually, their 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 models show it kind of leveling off until we we get to middle of September, and then I guess they're just a belief is the seasonality of, of what goes on with these types of viruses, kind of like the flu and everything else, flu season that the ambient temperature and humidity and just whatever else goes on in the seasonality that makes viruses more um, prevalent in some parts of the year and others that it's going to get worse. So. I guess the alarming part of that is we thought it was going to be a whole lot less severe now going into this season, but it, it, you know, for whatever it's worth, you look at models like this and you start thinking about, you know, what's our business going to look like once you start getting into to, to the fall months, what uh, is going to be happening with school and how is that going to affect our labor supply? Where are the consumers going to be with all of this? Uh, you know, trips and events and other things that we might have on the horizon or going into the, the fall of the year, what's going to be happening with all of that. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of unanswered questions. Yeah. It's going into convention time, um, Thanksgiving, the holidays. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on this that time of year. Oh, Hey, for anybody that's not able to see Marlo also posted a link for some uh, masks that her staff love. So I don't know about y'all, but I haven't found masks that my staff loves. So I'll be checking those out for sure. Thanks, Marlo. That's great. Can you click on these links? How does from? I can't. You can't. No. Not enough from this UI. I wonder if you're on Facebook. If you can, we can go in after the fact and play with that and see. Yeah. Um. On the legal side, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg has been hospitalized with possible infection. That's not what we want to talk about. I want to talk about another round of stimulus checks, extended unemployment. This is kind of what we know so far. Steve Mnuchin, the uh, Treasury Secretary, was interviewed, and this is fairly recent. This was yesterday, and um, they're looking at doing another round of stimulus checks. The last time they did it, they were um, did it for um, households with less than seventy-five thousand uh, dollars of, of income. This time around, they're looking at. They're talking about doing it, but lowering it to a lower level, like maybe forty thousand dollars of of household income. So fewer people will be getting that money now than if they, you know, if they go through and do that. But again, this is all just preliminary discussion. It's uh, it, there's some value in, in, in at least knowing what the thinking is. You can kind of plan not not definitive plans, but at least you can kind of start moving the same direction that the uh, pervasive thought is. They're talking about uh, the unemployment checks stopping. This is kind of interesting because that's going to come to a pretty hard stop with the federal monies here, I guess, within a couple of weeks. But um, they're talking about options of doing something more. Um, it doesn't look like if you remember back in the middle of May, the, uh, the House put forth this uh, bill called the HEROES Act, and they had 
a lot of money flying in a lot of different places. And it was going to take this $600 a week and continue it to uh, January of next year. That didn't happen. So I guess uh, for those of us who are trying to hire people, maybe that's a good thing. Um, but they're talking about con continuing to do it, but doing it in a way that will not uh, – create an incentive for people not to work. Um, I don't know if it was in this interview, maybe it was another one that I, that I, that I read, but Mnuchin was quoted as, you know, the White House will not pass a bill extending unemployment benefits if those unemployment benefits exceed more than what the individual would make working. So Mnuchin supposedly would be speaking for the executive branch, speaking for the president. So regardless of what the House and the Senate agree on, if the president doesn't sign it, it doesn't become law. So at the moment, the uh, White House position is they wouldn't uh, back any type of extended unemployment that exceeded pay that people would make if they were working. Um, a lot of our states are working hard though to extend unemployment benefits as a rule unemployment benefits i think are typically like 26 weeks but you can see here that just about every state has extended it some states more than others depending upon what color your state is it might be 30 to 39 40 to 49 some of the uh, lightest yellow color are all the way up to over a year so there's going to be more state unemployment benefits out there, regardless of what um, our federal government does. But it stands to figure that the federal government is going to do something more, but it's going to be less than 600 a week. And uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense that they so. I wonder what happened. My all my comments went away. I've got them over here. I don't have them. Here's, here's something that uh, you've lost on. Yeah, I think I'm frozen. No, nope. okay. am well, I unfrozen now? You're streaming fine. Okay. I think my cat was. Okay. Now you're, now you're muted, but you did that to yourself. You, you muted yourself, Liz. I'm trying. Now you're good. You're back. My cat. It, it's my cat. She's, she's being helpful. Yeah. Your cat stuff she's, on your keyboard? She, yeah. She, she decided it was time to take a nap on my keyboard. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, Daddy, I'm with you, right? Um, good to have some clients that are essential workers. Uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully more of those. Ernie's, All right. Ernie's at, uh, convention has been moved to Mandalay Bay. That would be Las Vegas, I guess. And they changed the dates too, y'all. So to end of November. Uh, but they haven't booked the hotel yet, so don't be booking anything. I know there were a few people that had already booked all of their information um, or booked their hotel and their flights for convention to Chicago. And then you know, it moved. So maybe just don't do it yet. Don't book stuff yet. And I know Arx is going to hate me for saying that, but still register, <laughs> register. But so I just be able to registration where if something happens or, you, or even if you decide you don't, or if there's a time that you could register and even you decided, Hey, I just don't want to go. They would give you all your money back. Are they still doing that? I don't know, Tom. Okay. I have no idea. I would assume yes. Well, I would assume yes. But RJ is here next week. We'll ask him. He'll know. Yeah, he'll know. Yeah. Yes, Mar Leslie. Thank 
Marla wants us to know that she loves those face masks as much as you can love a face mask, but it kind of kind of sounds like kind of sounds like it's the best bad alternative that we've found so far. Well, Brian said he bought the same masks and he agrees they're really good. So okay. I mean, masks are what they are, but it sounds like pretty decent. I'm getting some. That price can't be beat, right? I can't quite get the whole mask and glasses thing going at the same time. I my vision becomes impaired. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we don't have to wear them when we're in our cars driving because it would not be safe for me at no, all. It would be very bad. No, oh, yeah. Um, okay, so they are. So Marlo is saying that they are continuing that, Tom, and they're giving a discounted rate until July 31st. Okay. And Arxy's off funds, no questions asked. All right, well, so what that means to me is, y'all, everybody needs, if you're going, you're thinking about going, if you're seriously considering going, depending on how things shake out, register and get your money back, but at least give them some numbers to look at if if things straighten up in some way which you know the numbers aren't looking so great for that but um if you're thinking if they do then you're going to go okay well may, maybe give the convention committee something to hang their hats on should they continue preparing or not um 25 of these masks at no charge oh okay so linda had the same masks tom and okay. the, the her people like them too so I don't know. Now we've got three people liking these masks. I feel like I better get on and order them while you're still doing links or there might not be any left <laughs> by the time I get off this Facebook Live. <gasps> uh, all right. What else we got, Tom? We're, we're more than halfway through our call. We were going to go down these links. We're not doing a really great job of doing that yet. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. We're in Mass in Florida. We have them here too in Washington. But I don't know about you guys. The mandatory mask thing is making people so angry. We just have some angry, angry people here about the mandatory masks. Yeah, if you look up, Sarah, um, uh, uh, Marlo posted the, the link. Where is it? It's, it's up a little bit. And then... Um, yeah, just just look up. It's up there, Sarah. You'll see them. Here you go. Um, well, we got a lot of comments here. Where'd it go? Talking about those masks. <laughs> well, masks are a big deal. Here we go. Bang. Yeah. Good job. Bulk, bulkapothecary.com is the website you want to go to. Apothecary, is that like a old time drugstore? Is that still, uh, is that still, I mean, can you find the apothecary shop today or is that back when they would like give you a leech or, you know, bloodletting and all, all natural stuff back in the day, right? So I think that they do have apothecary shops now, but you're going to find teas and tinctures and that type of stuff you're not going to find um like the hardcore synthetic no and i wouldn't have expected to find masks but it makes sense that you would find masks there cotton masks yeah yeah, yeah I, I, i'm gonna definitely checking it out oh family-owned business nice definitely want to support them i like it there you go. All right. What else you got for us there? Okay. Well, this is the resource page on cleaning business today. And we've done a little housekeeping and we've organized things in a way to make it easier to find stuff. We've got categories now. Isn't nice. That awesome? Yeah. I didn't even know you did that, Tom. Good job. I didn't. I didn't even know it was done. I just looked at it a while ago and said, whoa. I guess Brandon's been busy. We talked about it. It was like on the, it was on the roadmap. So nice, good job, Brandon. High five for you. 
I don't think, I th actually, this looks different than when I looked at it 15 minutes ago. So I don't even think it's all quite right because we've got like Greg Shepard, SEO for beginners here under government resources. So he has a quite. He does exactly what stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie, I never heard of that. So you've heard click it or ticket. Uh, the mask one is mask it or casket. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I haven't heard that. All right, that's good. That's that's easy to remember. I like it. So here's Greg Shepard, <laughs> SEO for beginners, for instance. I'm just gonna click on that. And you remember what he did? He put a link to his website. Now you can download this. This is this is a 60 page document, people. 60 pages. Look at this. I mean, this is a something he has whipped together in 15 minutes. This has some useful information. Which is why we're going through the links because we want to show you guys that there's good stuff in here. This is not just a, some random page that we're just putting stuff there. This is some of the best stuff around in yeah. here. And why you, you know, even if you don't do SEO or do your, you know, somebody else does your SEO, I mean, you you're, you own a business. You're running a business. You know, I want to read. read book. This is an easy read, and you'll know. You know. Go up, Tom. I want to read the joke. You want to do what? I want to read the joke. I was reading it, and you've scrolled past. SEO joke. It's in teal. Uh, okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Right there. A search engine optimizer walks into a bar, a pub, a cantina, an Irish pub, a watering hole, a tavern, a saloon. <laughs> All right. Good one. Oh, <laughs> I like oh. it. <laughs> ah, nice. Glad I went back for that one. I am too, Tom. Good for you. Well, uh, okay. So this, this is something that I'm going to pull out and read. I'm like almost irritated that Tom pulled this up now because now I'm going to have to read what this. Other, what other thing you're going to have to do? Yeah. Uh, and for those of you that weren't on the call with Greg and don't know who he is, um, Greg owns two businesses in Dallas. You guys have heard of Dallas, fairly big city. And his two companies are the top two ranked companies. So he knows a little bit about SEO. Oh, and he did the SEO optimization on his companies. So um, Dallas Mains and Emily's Mains, if you want to um, see, see, see that. All right. What else um, you got here, Tom? We've got Liz Trotter's 51-point virus control checklist, which we... I'm not not really that important that anymore right back in the day that was a that was a thing we all needed to have something like that but not anymore and this is off of american made comcast.net but we'd push this over your website and you could get a, another backlink okay i want a backlink backlinks, I need it. backlinks are good more backlinks are more better that's good. So, um, bu -bu 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 -bu. The, Greg, uh, and two, pull that up, Tom. I haven't looked at Greg Shepard's bonus plan. Have you? Right above idle rule. You, before I do this, Liz, I have to ask you: Do you have the time for this? You asked for it. I I know someone that has the time for this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So this is um, pay for performance. A points program, y'all. So if you're looking for a pay for performance program that includes points, here you go. Something to look at. And a lot of times when you're finding stuff like this, you guys, it doesn't mean that you're going to take it. And you're going to use it exactly the way it is, but it's a jump off point. It's a place for you to start uh, creating your own program, whatever that is. All right. Awesome. Um, we were talking about Thank this you. long calculator. I'm just kind of curious what they've done. That's the ultimate paycheck. When was this last updated? That looks a little, little old. Um, old. Yeah. 
this was the calculator. Yeah. Four, seven, you say updated this June. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's not that long ago. It's almost, um, almost no, and that's, three weeks. Yeah. Actually, I think that's pretty good because I don't think they've made changes to how they're going to be doing it since then. True. A loan forgiveness calculator. So, oh, we downloaded it here. So, evidently, this loan calculator here is the latest and greatest and the newest June 17th. So, that would have been after the most recent changes. Yeah. So, that's good. How about it? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I'll, I would explain it, but we're kind of short on time. So we're gonna yeah, I'm going to say one thing. If you're not reporting until the end of the year, you're looking to do that at the end of the year, maybe hold off a little bit because who knows? Uh, are we going to get more PPP money? Are they going to change the requirements? There's still a lot that hasn't been determined there. Don't spend your precious resources and time filling that out now if you're not going to be having to uh, re report now. What's your, what's your understanding or do, do you have any, any knowledge of if there's a second round of PPP, but you've already, you, you went the eight week route and you closed out, does that preclude you from getting more PPP? I can't imagine why it would, that, that wouldn't make yeah. sense to me. Um, yeah, I, I, I have no way of knowing, obviously, but I, I, that wouldn't make sense to me. They're going to, if anything, those people needed even more. They needed it quickly. They used it. Now they're out. They need more. The yeah. people that, you know, are still sort of hanging on and got a little bit of money here or something. Maybe if they're looking for ways to cut who's getting PPP, I don't think it's the people who got it in the beginning and their money's already gone. That wouldn't make sense. Here's some good stuff here that Sean Day put out. And if you notice, he's got a, a backlink going to their website as well. Um, it's got a recruiting checklist and a, um, oh, sorry, I guess they had a deal as well. But this checklist was, was good. He gave us a lot of really good information. And you guys, people pay them good money to do the recruiting for them. They they pay a lot of money to to have blue skies do the recruiting, and they gave us their plan. So here, do this, <laughs> save yourself some money. Now, of course, if you don't have the money, I mean the time to do it, and you have the money, great, hire blue skies. But you don't have to hire them. There's their game plan right there. So check it out. What else we got in there? Oh, Paul's scripts. Remember, we never opened those up after we dumped them. Yeah. Um, this was this was very uh, very generous. This was all good stuff for FAQs. Yeah. Um, and didn't didn't he just ask that you not use it in his area? Which is Boston, Boston, yeah. Massachusetts. Up north, yeah. This is a pretty decent article on just how the virus spreads and talks about everything from, you know, bars to buffets to health clubs to buses and a lot of examples of, of what we've learned. And this is a little dated, but not bad. And, um, Seems more and more data is coming in. The consensus is building that it's the whole aerialization of the virus, which is the, the, the largest concern, which makes face masks even, even more relevant. Same time, when it, you're getting any type of guidance in terms of what you need to do to, to reduce the spread, wash your hands thoroughly as there every time. And, I mean, it does spread from surfaces, but the thing that seems to be getting the most attention and scaring more people is how long 
the uh, virus can, can, can linger in the air, but you have to get a good dose of it. And it's typically inside, being inside, close confinement, where the air is not circulating very well is where the, the bigger risk is. If you're outside or some large area with good air movement, you don't get enough, you typically wouldn't get enough of the virus to make it um, a problem, to make it contagious. The other thing that I'm remembering, Tom, though, around that is when they had the recirculated air. Remember they had that one diagram of the restaurant and the, the person in the front had COVID and where the air ran, everybody down that airstream all ended up with COVID. You remember that? Yeah. It was on the train. Restaurants and buses, they've seen that, just the way the air circulates, and you're sitting in the wrong place. And Yeah. So, uh, so when we're talking about getting the air circulating, what we mean is outside air being circulated in, not, not recirculating the same inside air. You're better to not recirculate the inside air. So, but fresh air is really, really good. So I haven't seen any studies that definitively speak to this as a strategy, but it's something that I think about, like when I'm inside someplace and I see the air conditioner vent blowing. I make it a point not to stand right under it or right next to it. I kind of try to get to a place where I'm not in the direct line of fire of the airflow. But I mean, maybe they haven't said anything like within this amount of feet or anything like that, but they have had enough of the tracing images and diagrams that make that seem like the smart move for sure. I'm always looking for those those events and staying out of the way there. Oh, this is Aaron again. Uh, yeah, this guy is pretty really good. good. This was the article that we actually shared the link to. I'm just wondering what else he's been doing. And I guess he's maybe took a some time off in June. Last legitimate post he had was the 29th of May. But um, this article here is, is worth a read too. It gives you a pretty good uh, understanding of what it takes to get sick, what it actually takes to catch COVID. And you need a you need an ample dose of of SARS-CoV-2 virus in order for you to actually contract the disease, I guess, is, 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 is the point. And there's a handful of ways that, that, that you can get that much of the virus in your body, and he, he kind of walks us through all of that. Oh, I saw recently um, um, an article about blood type that um, apparently blood type A, more people... Uh, tend to die or have serious consequences from the virus. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, that. Yeah, I saw something on that too. It's uh, like O negative blood type, which I guess is the most pervasive, the most most common, tends to fare better than some of the other combinations with some of the. Uh, what do they call it with the, when you got the A and the B and the positive, all the factor and all that. Yeah. That, that, that some of those tend to not fare as well. And it does mess with your, your blood and the, and, and the clotting in the blood. And that's, that's something that that's been well documented. And it sounds like they do have some medications for that stuff, but I, I know I have a positive blood, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to take it a little, make sure that I, Keep that top of mind and just one more little precaution there. Not that anything has changed, but it is what it is. Uh, oh, for those of you that on our call last week, we had Heather on. And was that Thursday that we had Heather or oh, Friday, right? When she on for on the spot? She yeah. was. She was. Yeah, she was on the spot. And she hadn't gotten her test back, her COVID test back. So for anybody that was wondering, yes, yeah, she finally got it back on Monday. 
positive for COVID. So uh, she is still uh, keeping herself apart from her family. And her poor husband's still on the couch. <laughs> for those that were inquiring minds right there. This is a good article, too. And I think this becomes my isn't going to be coming more relevant again. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard more employees, potential employees starting to express concerns about what risks are, are they facing uh, doing their job of, of cleaning homes with the coronavirus. And this goes through and does a pretty good uh, explanation of what the risks are by, by occupation and House cleaning is on here if you, if you go through it and the number of people you come in contact with during the day and the nature of, of that contact, your your chances of contracting COVID, you go maids and janitors is relatively low compared to all of, of, of these people. The higher you go up, the, the, the greater your chances are. Like you really don't want to be a dentist. You don't really want to be a personal care aide. Um, Is it the size of the bubble, Tom? Because that bubble looks pretty big for me. It's where you are exposure to disease and proximity to others. Look at Walter. They're way down there. Okay, you're going to make me go back and read it now. I know, sorry, Tom. That's okay. Each when you're done, represents the occupation. The bigger the bubble, the more people do that job. It's just a matter of the number oh, of people who do the job. That's great. I like that better. Can you please post this link? Also, I'm going to take this and post it in my private, my company private Facebook group and start a little <laughs> popping up here. So, so you got your two, you got the proximity to others. And obviously the more pro the closer you are to other people, the worse it is. And this act of exposure to the disease. So if you're close proximity to people and getting exposed to the disease, that's about as bad as it gets. So if you just draw a line from over here to over here, if you're closer, your job is to this corner, the better and the closer it is over here, the worse. So, we're on the, if you break it down to four quadrants, we're in the best quadrant. Nice. So. Yeah, I think I will draw a little quadrant. I like that. I think that's a great idea, Tom. I think that's a good visual for people. Um, <laughs> oh, you thought I was popping a beer too? Everybody thinks I'm drinking. Y'all, I don't drink. <laughs> Haven't had any alcohol in like 25 years or longer. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <gasps> or I, do I? I haven't, I haven't had any in. Hours, Tom. Hours. hours. Literally hours. Hours. <laughs> and I will, probably won't be able to say that an hour from now. How about that? There you go. So, um, all the links you can find here. Did you put that link up? Yeah. It's yeah, like I'm putting I'm putting all kinds of links. I'll put your New York Times article link in there, and I'd put the link to the the entire coronavirus page. Um, if you haven't oh, if you haven't subscribed uh, to Cleaning Business Today, you guys know the drill. Go out to the homepage and put your email in, and it's just too it's just too easy. It's so easy. I'm embarrassed. I'm even showing it to you. Email first name last name bang. Tomorrow is deal day. Introduction. It's soft launch. We want to be careful and start slowly. We don't want to pull muscle or anything, but um, it's going to be fun. We're going to have some information for you. We're going to have some deals for you as well. And you're going to get a feel for what it's about. So um, you'll be sure to want to mark your calendars uh, two weeks from next Wednesday. But mark it for tomorrow, too. And Leslie's going to be with us Thursday. And Friday is going to be on the spot. Yay. Hey, Tom, real quick. 
What is that article? How to write a cleaning service estimate that wins more contracts? Is that janitorial or is that residential? What is that? I'm just curious. We'll uh, bring it up here and we will see. Oh, yeah, you guys don't know this yet. And I'm just a little bit of a spoiler, but Sharon Cowan. Don't tell anybody. I'll write a clean business with a Winsport contract. What about wording a contract? Oh, it was a little more commercial or residential to me. Show the competitive advantage, point out your service, will impact the client. Oh, it's good stuff. Okay. Yep. Got a feeling. Okay. Got a feeling as, as COVID continues to linger on and not get any better and continue to get worse, you're going to see more and more property managers uh, looking for solutions to show some visible action to, to reduce the, the risk to their occupants and guests and so on and so forth. Opportunities. Yeah. Okay. Other people be better. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Oh, reminder, you guys. All of regulars that are on here today, I see a bunch of you on here. Denise, I don't know if you were on when I was asking for this earlier. Tomorrow, we're going to do sort of that soft launch for deal day. So if you guys can be on tomorrow and help us out, tell us what does work, what doesn't work. Bring bring note, bring paper and pencil. Or you know, I guess you could use your phone. <laughs> and tell us what does work, though, and also tell us what doesn't work, how we can make it better. That would be awesome. Very helpful. And it's easy for us to hear the information from you guys because we feel like you understand. Like you know what we're trying to do. You've been with us all this time. Where if we hear it from somebody that we don't really know, it's eh, all right, but eh. So that's why I'm asking y'all to come. We've been through a lot together. We've been through <laughs> a pandemic together. An unprecedented pandemic we've been through. Oh, Bam, Tom. Oh, I'm so proud of you because we almost get to do it. Got it in just under the hour. Good job. Ooh, that was close. Okay, guys. Alrighty. Take care. Be See safe. You tomorrow. See you tomorrow at five. Thanks. Bye-bye.